my name is Amanda Auker, and I am a second year PhD student here at San Diego State University. I work in Nick Shikuma's lab, and today I'll be talking to you about bacteria-activated metamorphosis. So for the past few decades, coral reefs have been in decline, and in the past few years, cor coral bleaching events have been documented the highest that they've been in history. Scientists have been working effortlessly in trying to figure out the best way that we can preserve these very important coral reef ecosystems. Um, one of these methods that have been proposed is an idea of recovery through recruitment. And recovery through recruitment is important, but in order to understand it, we kind of need to get at what a coral life cycle is like and how we can enhance the recruitment of baby corals to the seafloor. So if you think about a coral reef, it can undergo two different types of sexual reproduction. So you have the um, gametes being released into the water column, or you have larvae being released ready to settle. In either case, they're going to be released into the water column and they live there until they receive some sort of a signal that it is time for them to change their life cycle from a free swimming larvae to a settled adult on the seafloor. Now, one thing that we've been able to figure out is that the cue that they require to settle down to the seafloor is often triggered by bacteria. And this trigger, this cue, can be called BAM. Or bacteria activated metamorphosis. And that's what I'm going to be studying. So I'd like to study the mechanism by which bacteria create some sort of a signal that is recognized by different animals that go through this type of life cycle. So when we look at not only just corals, and we take a step back and say, hey, you know what? Two worms are doing the same thing. They have these free swimming larvae that require some sort of bacterial cue in order to settle on the sea floor. And then the same thing for these sea urchins we're seeing that there's this conserved mechanism almost, or at least conserved behavior, that they have free swimming larvae that require this BAM, bacterially activated metamorphosis cue. Um, so specifically, I'm going to be studying this in two worms. Um, and when I study this in two worms, we do that because it's a model, a uh, model organism rather, and it's a little bit easier to deal with in the lab, right? So we can collect them off the dock here in San Diego and culture them, and in seven days we have some adult larvae, and when we put bacterial, uh, when we put the bacterial cue on them, we can kind of predictably measure when this is happening. This allows us to actually also manipulate the bacteria at the same time. So by doing this, we can say that we have figured out the mechanism, or at least we can study the mechanism on a finer scale. The importance of studying this model organism is that we can then go to ask, hey, is this mechanism now conserved? So are we seeing this on the different organisms that we're testing? So can we say, hey, we're really worried about cor corals here or coral reefs, and can we then apply this kind of idea to corals? So if we think about um, corals, they evolved the earliest, right? So um, they were, uh, they evolved first. And then we look at tube worms and we say, hey, those have free swimming larvae too, and they are also require uh, this bacterial cue. And then, you know, uh, sea urchins came last. So if we draw a map of their existence, right? If this is like a, a map to their uh, evolution. We can see that the, the trigger, this BAM cue, started when corals evolved. So if we're studying this on an evolutionary scale and we say, hey, we see this in worms and we see this in corals, they might be using the same evolutionary mechanism to, um, to evolve and to find their place on the seafloor. And the importance of this is really brought to, if we're studying corals and we can find this conserved mechanism, then we can potentially restore coral reefs in a way that we can say, hey, 
these free swimming larvae are out here and we know what cue they require to settle. So all of the lost corals that are out there, um, we can get them to recruit. Thank you. Thanks for watching another presentation here at the Science Glass. If you want to know more about the research that you just heard about, check the video description below for a link to that lab's website. And if you want to see more presentations like this in the future, you can subscribe to us by clicking this button here. Thanks very much.